Good evening and welcome to the Silicon Valley Entrepreneur, a series of conversations with startup founders and the investors who fund them. I'm Chris Gill, President and CEO of SVAs, and tonight delighted to have with us uh, two of the founders of companies that were voted most likely to succeed at our recent launch Silicon Valley event. So Louise Klausmeyer, uh, Louise, Virginia, <laughs> I do beg your pardon, from Silvertex Biofuels, and Jose Luis Agel from Inno Valley. Thank you both very much for coming along. Very much appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. Not Thank at you. all. Thank you for having Not us. Not at yeah. all. Thank you. So um, we'd like to get a little bit of background on how the companies came about. So let's start with you, Vir Virginia. How did this come about? Tell us a little bit about what Silvertex does. Um, well, first off, how it came about, my father, my late father, William Claus Meyer, developed the alternative microemulsion technology, which is the underlining found, um, the foundation for our technology, which is a smart fuel. Mm -hmm. And we've developed um, an alternative fuel, which ultimately reduces emissions, displaces over 43% of uh, petrodiesel with biomass derived ingredients without affecting the performance and is cost competitive and that's ultimately our goal is to bring an alternative fuel to market. Terrific. So, yeah. But this is this was something your father invented? Yeah, he, he developed the microemulsion technology, uh, the pretty much the background of the technology that we're using for the fuel. Okay, and um, when, when was that done? Um, over the last 10, 12 years. Okay. So he's yeah he was um, he developed the baseline technology, filed quite a few patents, and then the application it can be used in many different ways, and we're applying it to the fuel industry first. So is your background in the fuel <laughs> industry in, 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 in the biotech? In, what, what, what is your what is your background? Yeah, I, I feel like I've been trained my whole life sort of for this role. Oh really? <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> so he um, he. Uh, was you know obviously a wonderful mentor and I was very inspired by him and his work. I studied chemistry and engineering in undergrad and graduate school and then did more business in my professional career and then mm -hmm. have ventured into the clean tech space mainly because it you know plays off of my, both my passions. So okay, yeah, very yeah. good, very, very excited. Good. Now something completely different from Jose <laughs> Luis. Exactly. So, yeah. so tell us a little bit about. Inno Valley and how you got here, because you're not a local lad, are you? Exactly, I'm not a local. So Inno Valley is a, is, a, is a technology company that does a completely different thing. We are in the clothing space and basically we approach technology to clothing brands. So we mm -hmm. develop concepts, technological concepts, playing with mobile app development, but also wearable technologies, meaning sensors, flexible photovoltaics. So all kind of electronics that nowadays are flexible, lightweight, and can be perfectly integrated in the, in the garment, into the fabric. Mm -hmm. So we play with these two technologies and we develop concepts that can be licensable for clothing brands. So we help them innovate in their existing products, like traditional foods, food, uh, sorry, uh, traditional um, shoes can add a lot of different functionalities when they relate to mobile app services. So this is somehow what we do. I'm gonna explain to you later maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more about our concepts and how did we start it? Well, uh, basically we are a, a group of entrepreneurs from Barcelona. So I'm from Spain originally. Um, and I came over to Silicon Valley three years ago because I wanted to experience the valley. So mm -hmm. I'm a, an entrepreneur lover, entrepreneurship lover. And, and basically we started two years ago uh, with the idea, I met my main co-founder, who's been a, a successful entrepreneur in Barcelona in the multimedia sector. So he had the idea of, well, I've been developing a lot of mobile apps and a lot of um, products for the television. Why don't we take out this technology and we put it into casual mm. products, so mm -hmm. products that we wear on, the, on a daily basis? And he had this idea. We started tailoring it a little bit, uh, analyzing the market, and we started January 2010 with Inno Valley as, as we know it right now. So we've been focused on, on developing the product. So uh, this, this year, basically product development, uh, articulating the company because smart fabrics and smart clothing is a complicated sector because it takes a little bit of nanotechnology, material science, software development, electronics. So it's a fairly complex 
uh, space, but we've been trying to create the synergies with other with other uh, s uh, technological centers, other companies that can become uh, strategic partners for us, and and we're happy to to already launch the first product and keep on developing uh, new concepts and new products for clothing brands. Okay, yeah. so tell us a little bit more about the products. Do you take existing technologies and apply them to clothing, or do you develop completely new technologies for this? Um, there's a little bit of everything. So basically what we see is that there are a lot of centers with great technologies already, mm -hmm. and the problem is that they don't know how to get to the market. So we create strat strategic partnerships with these centers, and we create concepts taking their existing technologies, and we create a commercial product. So this, this has been the case um, already with a research center that uh, it's been operating in the north of Barcelona in the smart fabric space. They have great technologies like lighting technologies that are uh, playing with LEDs that can be perfectly uh, and seamlessly integrated on the, on the fabric. So, but they don't know what to do with that. I mean, they are great at that, <laughs> but uh, they, they don't know how to approach customers and how to create a commercial uh, product, so something that really adds value to the user, to the final user. So we, uh, the, the, this is actually a case that uh, has happened and we've taken this technology. Mm -hmm. We have created uh, an interactive sweatshirt with this lighting technology, so <laughs> a dynamic di display that you have on the fabric, so on, the, on your sweatshirt, you can have you can basically project any message you want from your smartphone. So this has been a concept wow. that we've developed taking their technology. But uh, we're also doing a lot of uh, internal R&D mm -hmm. um, with these centers and, and, and also internal development, software development mainly. Um, so there's a little bit of both, internal technologies plus some external partnerships that okay. we... Okay. Give us a quick look at one of the things. You've got these these uh, running shoes here. Exactly. What, what, what's, what's the deal with the running shoes? So, I, I mean, I'm a fan of Google Maps, <laughs> for example. <laughs> I use it all the time. I actually used it to come here. <laughs> so it's great um, if you want to know how to get to your destination, but what happens when you cannot be looking at the screen of your of your smartphone. Mm -hmm. So we've developed this concept, so a normal pair of shoes can become another thing, can add external functionality. So, so for example, these shoes have, under the insole, have a vibration actuator, this piece of technology that right. we've developed. You, you put it here under the insole, as I said, and you can synchronize this with a mobile app. Uh, with a mobile app, it's actually here. So if you have your your smartphone, you can basically. Uh, I'm gonna show you. You can basically interact. Mm. So anytime you need to make a turn to the right, you would you would get a vibration oh, wow. signal <laughs> on your right, right shoe. shoe. Exactly. So what we've created <laughs> is a platform, not only for navigation uh. services, but also, I don't know, uh, we've developed an API that can be used by other d external developers. So they can, we, we see this product as an external platform. So other people can develop applications on top of this technology. Okay. So I don't know, if you have a lot of uh, tourism information, you can develop an app that vibrates whenever you're close to a hotspot in, in your city, for example, a museum or I don't know, uh, depending on the filter you want to have. So this is a new way to understand clothing. So it's not just a shoe, it's basically a shoe that helps you navigate or that guides you okay. when you're new in the city. And I know you've got some more samples and we'll come back and take a look at some other stuff. But back to you, Vir Vir Virginia, you've got some samples too, you've got yes. some show and tell. So tell us why is Silvertex Biofuels different? And, and and why, why did you, you know, end up being the most likely to succeed at launch Silicon Ooh, Valley? Thank you. Um, well, it starts off with the base of the technology. So um, oil and water don't mix. So on the top okay. here you have the diesel and then you have the, wa the water at the bottom. And to get it to mix, you need to have an emulsifier. So the foundation for our technology is we, are an, we have an emulsified. We have a, um, why do I want diesel and water to mix? Oh, that's a great question. So you want water, diesel and water to mix to not only to decrease emissions, but to increase the power output and then also so you can add biomass derived ingredients into your fuel. So I actually want water in my diesel? Yes. Oh, yeah. with, okay. With, but the caveat is you need to have an emulsifier. Okay. So you don't want water in your diesel like this. Okay. So you need it to mix into, um, into a consistent fuel. All right. a, a one 
So this is an example of a macroemulsion, which is an emulsifier that has phase separation, so you didn't have you don't have a homogeneous fuel, and it did not. It, so it's separate. So the water actually separated from the um, all the rest of the ingredients. It looks like a big chunk of wax or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And this actually um, was a different type of emulsified technology, fuel technology that was used before, um, but it didn't. It was not successful in the mainstream because of needing heavy mixing to keep it stable. Oh, okay. So it 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 can be turned back into an. an, an an emulsion and begin, yeah. but it needs but you to, need be to have heavy mixing. Agitated. So if yeah, you think okay. about this in an engine, it's not going to work and not be functional for, you know, to be heavily applicable. Not unless you've got a boom box in that's constantly <laughs> exactly. shaking the yeah. car. All right. Okay. Yeah. So what we've developed is a micro emulsion, if you will. So it's a smaller bubble right. and it en encompasses the ethanol and the water within a small bubble and the, with the surfactant, so veggie oil based surfactant. So here we have displaced 43% of the diesel with our microemulsion additive, if you will, our mm -hmm. smart fuel, and ultimately create a smart fuel because we displace the diesel, we reduce emissions significantly, so up to 40, or sorry, 78% of particulate matter. We also see some NOx emissions reductions as well. And um, we don't lose the power output with the, the specific chemistry between the um, all the ingredients. So this is a way of combining ethanol mm -hmm. and water mm -hmm. With diesel mm -hmm. to make a cleaner fuel that still provides the same power. Exactly, and also a key point that I can't overlook is that um, to have it cost competitive as well. So it will be um, right now it's cost competitive with the price of diesel and will be decreasing compared to diesel as diesel prices continues continually right. increase. So is is this at the stage where it's um, something you can do in the lab, or is this at the stage where you can now produce it in volume? Produce in volume. Um, right now, we are looking for our own little Silvatex vehicle mm -hmm. <laughs> to be using our emulsions in, and we're also starting or a piloting phase. So we've gone through the optimization of the specific diesel fuel, and uh, we're we're starting our piloting phase to ramp up. Okay, and and, and what does it take then to go from a pilot stage to being able to pr produce this in mass con 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 consumer mass production volumes? Yeah, that's a great question. So we actually have a shift in sort of market. Um, so at the beginning of our early market entry strategy, we're working with the um, the heavily, heaviest polluters, if you will, the folks that are getting um, lots of incentivization to use new products because mm -hmm. they're getting dinged for having emissions, high emissions. So the ports of LA, for example, and we're working with them on the, on the piloting and once we get past that phase and we have a verified product so mm -hmm. through the regulate regulation and all that um, we will then be licensing the technology to the chevrons of the world for mass distribution and, and um, development okay so you're not going to be building your own plant it's yeah going to be a exactly okay. exactly all i right. mean the idea of our company was not to work against the big manufacturers it was mm -hmm. to sort of work within the current infrastructure that's working and make a product that is smarter make it better and ultimately can be used within the current infrastructure okay that makes sense yeah yeah that makes absolute sense why reinvent the wheel is the yeah wheel's already out there. <laughs> sounds really painful find, <laughs> <What's it? laughs> find a way to work with the wheel that's there yeah okay that's terrific okay we'll definitely come back to, to dig into some more of that but i want to get back to some examples of some of the things that you've done you've already mentioned that you had this this sweatshirt where you could put messages out that's sounds great if you're walking down on the beach and you see somebody that you want to attract. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or I don't know if you're, uh, I'm, I, I like jogging on Embarcadero on, uh -huh. on San in San Francisco and, and it's a kind of uh, interesting relationship that we establish among the, the runners. Yes. So I don't know if you could project how many miles you've run so far. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, so you can it? cheer up the, yeah. the, the, the guys you're, yeah. you're crossing. I've so run 14 miles this morning. What about you? <laughs> yeah. okay. Something like this. So we're trying, I mean, uh, smartphones are great, but um, it's, a, it's a communication that um, has to be on the phone so we want to bring that to our real world which is the the, the world of people so mm -hmm. so this kind of um ways to better project your messages or the information you want to share uh, uh, with the world with the people you have surrounding you mm -hmm. these are some somehow the kind of concepts that we're developing and we're also um one of the technologies that we really like uh, is the flexible solar panels 
Yes, you had that on a bag when exactly, you came in. Exactly, exactly. That. That's so this is my bag, <laughs> the bag I normally use. Um, we've made <laughs> this with uh, advertising banners from the city of Barcelona. Right. So we are recycling the banners um, that are on the streets, basically. And we've, integra oh, wow. we've integrated this solar panel. This is a solar panel that is flexible, so you can basically fold it. And, and the output that you have is a USB connector. So you can plug in your normal cable, you plug it in, and you can recharge your electronic devices, small electronic devices like your smartphone, up to an iPad, for example, up to an, a tablet. Mm. So unfortunately, it's not yet ready for, for a laptop. Uh, we hopefully will get there soon. But the kind of power that we can create with such a surface is uh, suitable for small devices. So, so yeah, this is an, another example of how um, having wearable technologies integrated on, a, on an accessory in this case can better uh, or, or can create a better experience with your smartphone. So you can extend the life cycle of, of your batteries, at least till you get uh, at home uh, at night. So, so this is uh, another example of, of how, we, how we create concepts. That's very neat. For, for, for somebody who's on the go a lot, I, mean, you, I know there's, there's, there's very clunky solar cells you can put in your car and you hopefully get them to do that. But that you can carry around with you. As you say, it does your iPad, does your, does, does your, does your it, mobile phone. Exactly. And yes. they are very lightweight. That, this is, I mean, the, as I said, the power is still not great, uh, especially for the flexible solar panels. They have like more or less one fifth uh, of the normal rigid panels in terms of efficiency. So it's not great. There's, a li there's still a lot of development uh, need to be done but we strongly believe in this technology and step by step it has to be integrated in our lives uh, i mean we are somehow in the in the energy harvesting uh -huh. space so i think i think we need to we certainly need to uh, find new formulas to to recharge our our electronic mm. devices mm -hmm. and our okay. to power our our um, the things we normally use so so do you see yourself building um, a, a, a factory to pr produce these goods, or are you thinking of not at all? It? I mean, what's, we what's, have what's the we have. Um, it doesn't make sense for a for a small startup uh, to really develop the infrastructure to manufacture the product. So we we don't want to establish like a smart clothing brand. Right. We just want to uh, develop cool ideas that that are suitable for existing clothing brands, and we want to license that to them. Mm -hmm. So basically, we like creating. We have a, 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 a team of designers, engineers. We like being on this part of the process in which we can uh, basically develop stuff that then can be licensed to to others I mean there's great uh, great brands doing a great job <laughs> out there so mm. it doesn't make sense uh, for us to compete uh, against them so it's basically we are basically approaching them and, and trying to convince them that these kind of things new features on their existing products without just with a little bit of extra effort can can create new experiences so the, this uh, this is our goal to co-develop products with with existing clothing brands and with the the, the explosion of use of smartphones, this would seem like a no-brainer. Exactly, think? exactly. But there are still some technology challenges because wearable technologies is an emerging sector. As I said, there are centers um, doing great, great stuff in terms of nanotechnology, material sciences, um, also embedding sensors on, even on the yarn. Uh, so, so really on a small scale, but the problem is that um, there are still some technology challenges as I, I was saying. So for example, it's hard to make them fully washable mm. and they, mm. that they can resist um, okay. along the no. washable yeah. <laughs> right. wash no. cycles. And uh, so, so we still need to work a little bit on this kind of, of challenges and, and issues that the technology still have. But certainly, I mean, we most all, all, all the people are um, wearing smartphones with them and, and, the, and clothing as well. So it's right. a natural it's uh, a, it's merge. A natural exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. So Virginia, you know, back to you and the uh, actual fit. You, know, you talked about going, first of all, to the big po pollution areas like the, the port Ports of, of uh, LA, yeah, LA mm -hmm. and places like that. When does your technology make its way down to the consumer level? What, what steps does it have to go through before it can get down to that? 
So we have to get through the EPA is the big regulatory body, okay. Environmental Protection Agency. So we have to go through a series of testing to prove that our product isn't going to do anything to the environment or cause mm -hmm. long-term effects. And also to um, give provide data that it does what we think it does with mm -hmm. the emissions reductions. So a lot of that is so that we can be um, put into at, um, the space as a renewable technology and get all the tax credits and uh, low carbon technology mm -hmm. so that we can be have access to all of the those potentials so that's why we're going down that route okay and, and how far through that process are you um, well, we've definitely started with this with the diesel product already. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, we've created a lot of the relationships internally, and right now we're looking to collaborate with the, either the military or the ports of LA. And we've already established those relationships to start doing demoing projects. Um, we're hoping that we can do a demo project, which would sort of kill two birds at one stone mm -hmm. <laughs> and move forward. And that takes a little bit more strategic planning. Right. <laughs> so in my mind, that's that's the best way to move forward. We are, we have limited funding. Sure. So and then um, we're also hoping to or will be developing the other product lines so um, we're going to be developing a product for biodiesel that um, helps to reduce the NOx the NOx increase you see associated with biodiesel and mm -hmm. also other products in the fuel space as well so when you say NOx do you mean mm -hmm. the engine NOx sorry. or do you mean nitrous oxide nitric oxide, nitric oxide. Yep, sorry nitric oxide. Getting a little okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay uh, and so this is just the start of a number of products that you see coming out? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we definitely see this is going to be an evolving technology. Um, the applications, uh, since the foundation is the microemulsion, so it's a green, if you will, microemulsion mm -hmm. that utilizes non-toxic, renewable um, resources that you could use this for really any type of technology you need an emulsifier. So with makeup foundation or, you know, there's many different spaces you can go into. We're focused on the fuel space and particularly the diesel space right now because not only is it the biggest market, but also it is you know, the heaviest polluting problem. So diesel is used 10 times more than gasoline in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the most uh, heavily used sources of energy. So if we can tackle and even combat that, the amount that this is you know, producing, then get that emissions reductions worldwide. I mean, we'd see a significant increase. Now, you, you've just mentioned what sounds to me like a huge market. You've just gone straight mm -hmm. past it. Makeup. <laughs> yeah. This can be used, the, the technology can be used in the makeup market? It could be used in the makeup market anytime you have an emulsified, yeah, an emulsifier. So for foundation, we are mixing the oil based with the water based types of chemicals. So that's also, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a huge market. Yep. And again, a worldwide market. Yep. Um, nothing seems to be able to stop people buying makeup. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so. But like all startups, wow. you need, you need a, you need a, focal point and uh, oh, sure. you know sure. so we're, we're definitely focused on the fuel space right now right so it's perfect timing right so <laughs> get get the fuel space done first get a substantial foothold mm -hmm. in that and then uh, then expand to adjacent exactly markets. Okay. okay exactly do you have a similar strategy with regard to adjacent markets um, or, or? well yeah more, more or less because we first started with a clear focus on the fashion world right. so so and um, that's where we saw our niche and our blue ocean somehow mm. because we we already we saw some integrations already uh, done on the health market and also on the sports market but step by, by step we see like other emerging sectors mm -hmm. like for example advertising for the for the luminescent technologies so so you can project advertising messages so this is um this is going to be our second um step advertising and also like safety safety we see that a lot of services um can increase the safety of for example motorcycle riders but since they are in the smartphone and the mo the rider cannot interact with the smartphone um there's a certainly a space to increase the clothing that normally riders wear mm. that better inter interact with these sensors uh, with these services sorry so mm. imagine like sensors on the sleeve uh, lighting signals when whenever there's a traffic jam or an accident or i don't know if you're overpassing the speed uh, the speed limit of that particular road so we see a potential um a great potential in this kind of uh, on the safety let's say safety market mm -hmm. so these are a little bit our steps so mm -hmm. first casual applications then uh, or clothing that we wear on a daily basis then advertising and probably we will be expanding into the safety uh, world as well mm. wow now, there's one one technology i read about 
very recently, um, I don't know if uh, you, 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 you probably are aware of it, you know, where using um, nanotechnology I'm sure, within fibers themselves, just the movement, micro movements of the fibers collectively can generate enough electricity to power stuff. That, that's <laughs> correct. There is the, the the, there are two universities in the Bay Area that I know that they have research departments do, uh, going in that direction. Right. I know that the power that they can generate is still not enough. Okay, <laughs> all right. To do anything. Okay, so that's maybe so, a small so, some way off. Exactly. But the idea uh, itself, the idea. exactly, exactly, because you could have our your your own battery on the on the t-shirt or on the shirt you're you're wearing so see, yeah yeah this kind of of technology is certainly uh, popping up and i know that there are research centers and research departments within universities around us that are working on that yeah. okay so in fact you you're actually very uh, close to each other in 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 the clean generation of of energy business because you're going that way too as, 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 as well as having stuff that, that can mm -hmm. feed back to the uh -huh. other phone. So this is really quite interesting. So do you see an opportunity to maybe take some of his stuff and apply it into yours? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's definitely always room for partnerships. Right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, of course, <laughs> why not? Always shared information, yeah. So g given, your, given your druthers, and we're a little bit running out of time now, uh -huh. where would you like to see Silver Tax in about five years time? Oh, in five years' time, I definitely want to be working in the international space. So we would have gone through the verification process here and had some um, good licensing that was actually um, working with distributors nationwide and then hitting the global market okay. and penetrating, starting to penetrate that, as well as developing a couple different products and um, have probably developed our biodiesel product and moving on to a couple others. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Jose Lu Luis, how about you five years' time? I would, uh, I'd like to see Novali as part of a clothing brand already, so yep. being acquired by, by a huge clothing brand and being their innovation department basically specialized on wearable technologies and mobile app development. Terrific. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep an eye on both of you to and see if we can do to help you make both of those things happen. We've, we're now run out of time, unfortunately. So v v Virginia and Jose Luis, thank you both very much for coming along. Uh, and uh, best wishes for being the company's most likely to succeed from North Silicon Valley. I think it's outstanding. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, both you. Very thank much. you very Pleasure much. Pleasure to talk with thank you. Thank you. And it's a uh, good night from myself, Chris Gill, and hope to see you again next month. Good night.